Hello, I'm JW, and in this video, we're having a look at this LED floodlight here. Now, this is a 10 watt variety, and these are rare in various ratings, and also from a variety of suppliers, some of which are somewhat better than others. Now, I have bought these particular ones before, so I know that these are the decent ones. So, uh, this is actually 10 watts, not one of those ones that claims to be 10 watts, but actually something like 3 or 4 or something stupid like that. And it's one of these uh, sort of self contained jobs that comes with the bit of wire attached. And in this video we're just going to take this wire off because uh, the problem with this is it's ridiculously short. And if you fix this on the wall then uh, where exactly are you supposed to put that? I mean it's not going to reach uh, anywhere other than to a little uh, junction box on the wall next to it which is kind of a bit crap. So uh, I'm going to open this up and uh, change the wire and also uh, just point out a couple of other things to look for if you are going to be buying this sort of thing uh, fairly cheaply. Now here's this particular one and it comes in this box uh, with a red top that says spot lights and it has a little label. And so these are actually uh, 10 watt ones, uh, whether they're exactly 900 lumens is another story. But uh, so I have bought these before, so uh, I do know these are the decent variety. And uh, so the main problem with these is the wire, as you can see, is incredibly short there. So, so by the time you fix this on the wall, like that, you don't exactly have a lot to go anywhere. So the best you can do is to stick a uh, junction box on the outside there on the wall, uh, waterproof obviously, and then uh, connect this to some other wiring. But that's not necessarily very convenient. So what we'll do is open this up and change this wire for something a bit longer. So first of all, we just need to undo the screws here. So we'll just take the uh, four screws out the back there, and then this just lifts away. And it's the type with the uh, actual LED element is in a separate compartment there with the uh, heat sink there, and you've got the drive unit in the back here. Uh, notice the driver unit basically fills that whole space, hence it being the uh, proper 10 watt one and not some other lower powered equivalent. And you see the wires just come in straight from the flex there, directly into the uh, two holes in the driver there. And the earth wire comes across, and yes, in this case it is, of course, properly fixed down to the metal work there, which uh, of course is uh, very important. So, so that's fine. So what we need to do is to uh, remove the wire from there. So make it easier we'll just cut it off and then we should be able to just ease that through the gland on the back. I notice this is actually metal so I've got the uh, seal all the way around there so uh, fairly decent uh, style of thing. So what we'll do now is just to pull this out of sleeving away there. Now for the earth one we can actually undo this tab here Now for the earth wire here we can uh, simply just attach a uh, new piece completely and then just uh, fix it back under the screw there so there's no point uh, trying to join this because obviously you just put a new lug on the end. But for the module itself uh, it's, it's all uh, basically sealed in and uh, the wires just go straight in so though we could start digging this out and trying to uh, solder inside of course it's not really the best plan so what we'll do is just to uh, strip these wires here and then we'll make a joint uh, on those and insulate that properly. And that will just go in back of there, and you see there's plenty of space uh, to accommodate the wires and a join in the back there. Now to extend, we'll just use the uh, same size and type of flex here. This is uh, three core, uh, 0.5 millimeter size. And you see it's uh, pretty much the same uh, deal as what we've taken out. So that means we don't have to start altering the glands here because the hole will be a suitable side to seal around the new flex as well. And of course, all keeps it all uh, consistent throughout. So I'll just get the wire then to strip that, and you'll just score down the exterior of that. And at the end, we can slice in. Now, I say there may be a bit of damage at the end, but uh, it doesn't matter because we're going to be stripping that anyway. And because it's scored, we can then just basically tear that open to a sensible length. And then just score around, and that should just pull away there, giving a clean end. This particular cable has chalk inside or something, so that's why it's a bit white and dusty. So let's clean that up. And though we've torn it there, do make a check if you do this, just to make sure you haven't damaged any of the inner cores when removing the outer covering, which we haven't. Now, of course, we want to thread this through the lid. You could cut the other end and thread that later, but generally, uh, advisable to thread it through first, particularly if you'd already put something on the other end like a plug or some other connection, although in this case it will be a permanent installation so it won't be a problem. And you see it will just ease through the 
existing grommet there, and provide a decent waterproof seal. In terms of being waterproof, it's going to be that way up anyhow, so it's not a huge issue because obviously the water will run down the cable, but uh, nevertheless, may as well make it a decent seal if you can. So at this end here, we just need to put a appropriate lug on the end of the earth there, so we'll just strip that wire. Of course, the lugs I have are slightly too big, so we'll just fold that over and then we'll just crimp that on. Ideally, this will be a red one, but this will do just as well. So there we have it, and of course, that will just go on to the fixing here with the screw through the centre. So that's the earth there, and off that connects to all of the metal frame of the device. And now for these other two, we need to obviously join the two corresponding colours together. So I'll just strip the ends of this. And the end of that one. And of course do likewise here. Now I'm actually going to shorten these a bit, because we don't want those to be massively long. And also that means that the... Uh, Earth will be a similar length then once we've got all of the uh, extra bits fixed together. So I'm just going to uh, twist those up a bit. Do not close with those. Now, if this is actually 0.5, they should be uh, virtually the same identical appearance, which they are. So again, they have actually used the proper sized flex on there that they claimed rather than some aluminium coated junk. Now to join these we could use various methods, we could use uh, obviously crimps if we wanted and just use the uh, crimping tool there to uh, draw them together and other way possibly some screw terminals but in this case we're actually going to solder these because of course that's far more reliable and before soldering we need to put some insulation here so we can cover over the joint afterwards so what we've got here is some heat shrink sleeving and uh, here's some blue here and we just need to cut off a uh, suitable length just trim that in so it's square And you could use any colour, of course, but uh, because we can, we're going to use the proper blue and brown colour. So I'll just uh, get all that spare. And obviously you do need to put this over the wires before soldering, not afterwards. And uh, I'm sure anyone who's done this sort of thing before has, of course, made that mistake before. So uh, we'll uh, just put that there and before soldering, we'll just make a uh, mechanical connection between the two strands. As of course, you just put solder on that's not particularly strong mechanically, so it could uh, just pop apart. So we'll uh, twist those two thoroughly together. Now, just fold that so it's reasonably flat. That, and obviously we then put the sleeving over once it's soldered. Now I've only got a thin solder here, so I'm just going to uh, wind that into a wider piece. Does it, uh, thin solder is handy for thin things and small items, but uh, for large cables and things, although this is not particularly large, it's a lot larger than certain electronic components, so uh, just wind it into a thick strand and then uh, I'll say use that. So let's mount a bit on first. That's probably good coating on there. So there we have it. And uh, so it's probably secured together. I'll just uh, reshape that while it's still pliable on the plastic insulation. And then, of course, we can just slide our insulation over there and heat that so it will shrink down. Now, that was lead free solder, sadly, which is what we happen to have here. You could use uh, leaded type if you want. It's certainly much easier to use and uh, probably recommended in those circumstances. Now, we could just shove the sleeving over, but uh, because solder may have some uh, sharp pointy bits, what we'll do is just put a bit of tape over that to start with. 
Don't again, we can use the uh, proper colours here. There's no particular need to use the right colours, but uh, because we can, we will. So we'll uh, cover that with the tape to start with. So I'll seal it there, and then we can just slide the whole lot over there, and of course, over there like that. Get that fairly centralised, and then it's just a question of heating that to uh, shrink the sleeving. Unfortunately, I can't do that in here because the hot air gun I have is broke, so I'll do that in the kitchen over the flame on the stove. So we'll do that in a moment. So that's all uh, shrunk over there now, so uh, fully insulated, so covered with the tape inside, and of course the heat shrink over the top, so the actual connection's there. We've got a good, uh, good two centimetres or so on either side. Earth clamp down there, so all that remains is to put the lid on and then we'll test it. And then also it can be installed in the place it's going to. So just pull that wire back and I'm going to try and fit this inside here without getting the wires completely tangled. So maneuver the wires through the various end pieces there. So if you get one of these and the uh, driver's half that size, it means you've been done over because the uh, driver's probably only a 5 watt or something. So uh, just make sure the wires are going to be within the casing and not caught under the edges. Put together and obviously make sure that the lid's on the right way up so the wires coming out the bottom and obviously the bottom is where the two bolts are there. And that, uh, Put that bracket will fold down and fit on the wall in that fashion. So uh, once we've done that, we just need to put those screws back in. So that's all reassembled there, and I've just uh, stripped the end here just to uh, get the wires there for testing. And I'll just use this uh, connection block just to connect that up temporarily to make sure that it's uh, first of all safe and uh, secondarily it does actually work because. Pretty embarrassing getting to the uh, place it's going to be installed and uh, spending an hour fixing it up on the wall and whatever. Only to find that it's broke because we uh, didn't reassemble it properly. Now we just use the uh, testing machine, which uh, is out of sight here. But I've shown it in some other videos anyway. So we just connect in here with the uh, appropriate colours. So neutral line and of course earth in the middle, and the wire here. Just connects to some appropriate uh, metal part of the case there, so that uh, screw on the side will do. And uh, just pick the test here, which will be again the 0.1 ohms to confirm the earth is connected via this wire here to the block in there. And uh, also, it does the insulation test between uh, basically those two and earth, so make sure there's no uh, shorts or faults or whatever on the device. So, uh, just try that. Yeah, that's fine. That's a pass there. I actually can't see it, but uh, that's fine. So uh, the other thing we can do now is just check that the thing does actually light up. And sure enough, it does. And so these are actually the uh, 10 watt variety, not the uh, fake sort of 3 watt or something, uh, which obviously is. Uh, not what you want at all, and this is the warm white variety, obviously there. So uh, you can also get the cold white, which uh, is slightly brighter, but uh, it's very minimal difference. These, of course, uh, are more sort of uh, warm look, closer to the uh, tungsten equivalents that they are replacing. So that's fine. That's all done, and uh, this can now be installed uh, in the place it's going to. So uh, until next time, uh, thanks for watching.